Everyone has seen a hair that doesn't belong to them in some random unwanted place like their food. And the natural reaction for anybody would be just to ick out because it's not your hair and there's no way for you to know if it's been washed in the last 24 or even 48 hours. And that's nasty. So I have this problem with straight hairs, especially if I'm sitting behind somebody in class and they have like all these straggle hairs and I'm afraid that they're going to touch me and it just grosses me out. And I realized that's just a strange thing to be bothered by, so I decided to look into it. And ketophobia is the fear of hair. And today I'm going to tell you what causes ketophobia, how it affects daily life, and how it's treated. So first let me explain the difference in being grossed out by people's hair and actually being afraid of it. And ketophobia.com explains that ketophobics react to like stray hairs and fluffy animals or even hairy people with a range of anxiety. And uh, anxiety symptoms are like nervousness, sweating, nausea, and in, in extreme cases like panic attacks that can put you in the hospital. And because these symptoms can be very serious, obviously it's going to alter the lives of those it affects. Um, this illness affects careers, relationships, and daily interactions. Like what would happen if you had this great job that you've always wanted and you start like your first day and you're so excited and you're ketophobic and your boss comes in and he's like this hairy man. He has long hairs all over his arm and maybe like long hair and he's like trying to instruct you because it's your first day and you're just like about to die of a panic attack because he has so much hair. Like that would be really tough to handle in a professional situation. Um, once ketophobic person has been set into a panic mode from a hairy interaction, they may take extreme measures for long periods of time to avoid any hair. Like, um, I read an article on Bright Hub, and this person was ketophobic, and they found just like a small hair in their food, and for a year and a half, they would only eat like prepackaged food, and if they cooked anything, they had to cook it themselves. And a year and a half is a really long time to live on like ding-dongs and ramen noodles, you know? So, now you're thinking, how does a person even get like that? Well, most phobias are caused by some childhood experience, according to Osovo.com. Ketophobics may have had a bad interaction with like an animal or a hairy person or even like had hair in their food at a young age and um, it just bothered them. Triggers can be related to germophobia or agoraphobia because the extreme measures that you may take to avoid this thing. So um, it's rooted in two different phobias also. So someone who's agoraphobic could turn into a ketophobic or vice versa. Also, research suggests that uh, phobias can be genetic. So like if my mom is ketophobic and she's terrified of hair, then I could have that gene to be terrified of hair, even if I never had a bad experience. Since ketophobia is classified as a mental illness, there has to be a treatment. And um, phobias are irrational fears, and the people that have phobias, they realize it's irrational for them to be afraid of these things, so actually treating their mindset is impossible, because they understand, like, it's ridiculous that they're afraid of these things. So all treatments for phobias are based on the symptoms to treat symptoms and reactions. Um, exposure and response prevention therapy called ERP is intense but also most effective according to osovo.com and what that is is someone would just come in and you're ketophobic so maybe they would have something small at first like fuzzy pillows or something and they would have you like pet the fuzzy pillow or hang around with it a while and just talk you through it so that you don't have such a freak out mode and then it would just progressively get bigger and bigger depending on what your hairy thing is like a hairy person or stuffed animals or whatever eventually they would get you to be able to interact with it without having a panic attack also behavior therapy and hypnosis are practiced um, hypnosis is usually just used to see like what actually caused it and so then the therapist could try to go back into your childhood memories and like talk you through that situation to try to calm you down and react differently due to whatever caused your phobia. And if it is proven to be genetic, then it wouldn't really be a, a treatment, it would be more of a prevention because it would just be a genetic mutation when you're having a baby. So, in conclusion, ketophobia is the life-altering and irrational fear 
of hair in all forms. You now know how to identify ketophobia, how it affects daily activity, and how it's treated. Next time you find a straggle hair in your food, be thankful you can move on at the next meal and not have to live on Twinkies for a year.